Welcome back to the second video about matrices and matrix operations. In the first video we covered the basics of matrices and vectors. In this second video we will learn how to calculate the determinant and the inverse of a matrix. We will first have a look at the determinant of a matrix. The determinant is a number that can be calculated only for a square matrix. The determinant of matrix A is denoted like this. The determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is calculated as A times D minus C times B. As an example, let's consider the following matrix. The determinant of this matrix is calculated as 3 times 4 minus 2 times 2. 12 minus 4 is 8. The determinant of matrix A is therefore 8. For a 3 by 3 matrix, we can use the Cyrus rule where we first copy the first two columns and place those to the right hand side of the matrix like this. Then we multiply the numbers in this diagonal. Add it to the product of this diagonal and to the third diagonal. And then we simply subtract with the sum of the products of the diagonals going from the bottom to the top. As an example, let's calculate the determinant of the following matrix. We copy the first two columns of matrix A and place them on the right hand side. 1 times 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 5 times 3 is 30. We continue like this. The determinant of this matrix is equal to negative 10. Finally, we'll see how we can divide one matrix by another matrix. However, although we can divide a matrix with a number, there is no such thing as dividing one matrix by another matrix. Instead, we multiply by the inverse of one of the matrices. For example, let's say that we like to calculate 12 divided by 4. We can rewrite this as 12 times 1 over 4. And we can rewrite 1 over 4 as 4 to the power of minus 1, which is the reciprocal of 4. Thus, we can do the same thing with a matrix. We can for example multiply matrix A by the inverse of matrix B. We will now see how we can calculate the inverse of a matrix. Note that we will only calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix which follows a relatively simple procedure. For larger matrices it is more complicated and will not be discussed here. In order to calculate the inverse of matrix A we swap the positions of the elements A and D. This means that we put A down here and D up here. Then we put negatives in front of B and C. And finally we divide this matrix by the determinant of the original matrix. In other words we multiply the matrix by the reciprocal of the determinant of matrix A. As an example, let's calculate the inverse of matrix A. We swap the positions of 3 and 2. Then we put negatives in front of 1 and 4. Next, we calculate the determinant of matrix A as 3 times 2 minus 4 times 1. 
we see that the determinant of matrix A is 6 minus 4, which is 2. Finally, we divide all elements of this matrix by 2, which is our determinant of matrix A. Therefore, the following matrix represents the inverse of matrix A. However, for some matrices, we cannot calculate its inverse. This happens if the determinant of a matrix is equal to zero. For example, we cannot compute the inverse of the following matrix. Because its determinant is equal to zero, since you cannot divide by zero, no inverse exists for matrix A in this example. To check that our calculations of the inverse of matrix A were correct, we can multiply matrix A by its inverse, or the inverse of A times A, which should result in the identity matrix. This is similar to the case when we multiply a number by its reciprocal, which would result in the value 1. For example, 5 times 1 over 5 is equal to 1. Let's multiply matrix A by its inverse that we calculated earlier. We multiply the two matrices by first multiplying the first row of matrix A by the first column of the inverse of matrix A. 3 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2 is equal to 1. 4 times 1 plus 2 times negative 2 is equal to 0. We continue in the same way and note that this calculation also results in 0. And we see that negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Just as we expected, multiplying matrix A by its inverse results in the identity matrix. We have just seen that multiplying matrix A by its inverse results in the identity matrix. Finally, we will have a look at how we can solve a system of linear equations by using matrix operations. For example, let's solve the following system. First, we write the system in matrix form. Let matrix A be our coefficient matrix. This matrix stores the numbers on the left hand side. B is our constant matrix, which stores the numbers on the right hand side. And X is our variable column vector. The linear system can be represented in matrix form like this. The system can therefore be formulated like this. To isolate or solve for matrix X on the left hand side, we can multiply by the inverse of matrix A on both sides. Multiplying the inverse of matrix A by matrix A will result in the identity matrix, and we can therefore isolate X on the left hand side. Thus, the solution of this system can be found by multiplying the inverse of matrix A by matrix B. As we know from our previous calculations, this is the inverse of matrix A. Multiplying the inverse of matrix A by matrix B results in the following column vector. Thus, A is equal to 1 and B is also equal to 1. If we substitute A and B by 1 in the linear system, we see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. This was the end of this lecture about the basics of matrices and vectors. In the next lecture we will discuss eigenvectors and eigenvalues.